we uh, you should just see an introductory slide. It's not quite time to start yet. We got about four minutes. Thought I'd log in early, make sure everything is all set up. Uh, the YouTube folks are going to be joining us very shortly, as well as the Facebook folks. For that, I appreciate it. Um, type in something. Uh, when you guys see something, type in something. Thomas, hi, how are you? Thanks for being here. <clears throat> appreciate it. It's midday. I'm going to say it's midday in the East Coast. It's almost midday in Chicago. Lee, how are you? Good to see you again. Uh, hopefully, uh, you're all done with uh, your work with your in-laws. Thomas says it's, uh, it's midday in South America. It makes sense. Terrence from Seattle, welcome. Thanks for being here again. <clears throat> Morph, I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. I'm feeling pretty good today and uh, looking forward to talking about micro crude oil um, and crude oil futures in general. We've had some excitement lately in this, in this particular market for sure. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. So we're going to start right on time, um, 10 o'clock. Let's wait a couple more minutes and we'll launch right into it and get moving. Uh, am I still eating turkey? I think our turkey leftovers are gone. Um, let me move some of my screens around. So uh, no, I had, um, we'll talk about that chart in a minute. <clears throat> um, we had, um, I'm back on my diet and my, my focused, uh, eat well approach. I had uh, Greek yogurt and frozen cherries for lunch today. So that's my new, uh, it's not my new thing. I've been doing it since March, so almost a year. So all is, all is good. <clears throat> Lee is done, that's sweet. <clears throat> Excuse me for my allergies today. I don't know why they're so bad. It's gonna be like, it's like 65 here in Charlotte, crazy. Crazy, crazy. After 58 years in Chicago, it's like bizarre. But I can't say I'm complaining. Cannot say, okay, so the YouTube folks, Facebook folks, Zoom folks, everybody's good to go. And it's almost exactly 12 o'clock. I'm gonna take my glasses off. I don't need those anymore. My screen's bright and big. I have my soundproofing shade down. Door closed, ready uh, to go. Uh, Michael, it's a great question. My class is this live. <laughs> I, it's, I think so. I hope so. I hope my reality is uh, um, is set in properly. But I think I'm alive. Um, thank, thank God. Every morning when I wake up, um, it's going to be a good day today. So absolutely, Michael. Also, just want to remind everybody. You have the opportunity uh, to see recordings on the, U on, the, on the Ninja Trader YouTube channel. So let's go ahead and hop into it. Uh, we are ready to go. My name is Jim Kegnina. I'm the Senior Education and Training Specialist at Ninja Trader. Um, I'm going to be, uh, we have a little bit of a PowerPoint today. Also going to, then we're going to hit the platform and we look at the charts and we're going to talk about what's going on in the crude oil marketplace um, and do some sample trades just so you can get a feel for how it all works with this particular market. Great market. Been around a long time, and uh, the micros are relatively new, um, so we're gonna we're gonna get into it. I do want to remind everybody: trading futures, options, and futures involve substantial risk of loss, not suitable for all uh, investors and traders. Oftentimes, in futures trading, you have high combination of leverage and volatility, and although that could be an equation for opportunity, also an equation for risk. Uh, so be careful only fund your futures trading account with risk capital. My personal definition: money I could afford to lose doesn't change my lifestyle or lengthen my retirement horizon or overly stress me out. When we're in stress, you know, stress in life matters, we make bad decisions when we're under stress. So be in a good place, risk capital only, easy on the day trade margins and on the leverage. Feel free to type uh, questions in as we go. We'll take them live as we go. Um, and uh, we have plenty of time. So uh, we'll kind of walk through this in a nice orderly fashion. Um, we are going to be using, I'm logged into my, my simulated live trading account with a real-time data feed, and we'll be taking a look at the Ninja Trader platform also. 
Okay, um, Thomas is jumping right into it already. We're going to talk about day trade margins. We're going to talk about overnight margins. We're blowing off options. This is uh, just futures today, Taryn. Sorry, uh, Thomas. Sorry. Um, anyway, micro crude oil. This is part of this whole movement. You know, the CME Group's movement of launching. Uh, smaller size contracts based on successful bigger size contracts. And this one was brand new, right? It's launched in Jul this summer, July 12th, 2021. Um, this market became a, became a thing, right? And like most of the micro complexes, uh, micro, like the micro comp, most of them are, are, are one tenth the size of what I'm going to call the classic uh, contracts. In this case, the standard size contract or the the crude oil futures, which, you know, the ticker symbol is CL, right? That's kind of the, the one that's been around a long time. Um, this is uh, the same basis, the same, pretty much the same product, the same commodity, except this market is one tenth the size uh, of, the, of, the, of the regular one. And you can see, I have two trading ladders on the right-hand side here. I have the MCL, which is the micro, and uh, you can see prices moving around. And you can see then the, the, the next uh, trading ladder on the right is the CL, right? The bigger size contract. And you can see the prices are in sync, right? They're, they're nearly 100% correlated, right? And it's because the basis of the, of the market is the exact same. And so you're going to see that, right? Um, uh, <clears throat> Raphael, good question. I believe the answer to that is yes. I'll show you how to do that uh, in a little while. Um, so the, the, the punchline here for these micro products, particularly the crude oil and some of the other ones that are popular is, you know, futures are now accessible to everybody, right? You, you virtually, not every, I mean, almost everybody, right? You could, you could fund a futures account with hundreds of dollars instead of thousands of dollars, right? And you can still have, and you can still have a day, a, a pattern day trade like experience with a trading ladder, depth of market, uh, real time streaming, uh, you know, single click order entry, all that stuff that you're going to get. No, we'll look at the, the platform more as we go, but um, that is the thing. So what are, what, what's crude oil? Crude oil, okay, it's, it's obvious, you know, everybody probably kind of has an idea what crude oil is, but it's naturally occurring unrefined petroleum composed of hydrocarbon deposits and other organic materials, right? Um, now, it's the, the crude oil complex, the, the, this particular crude oil is, is a, a global uh, benchmark crude oil product, right? West Texas Intermediary, it's called. Um, sometimes folks call it, call it light sweet crude futures, but West Texas Intermediary Futures is like the official name, right? And it's traded at the CME Group's Globex market, Texas Tea. <laughs> okay, Jed, looks like Jed can't clamp it, has made the room. Uh, it's traded at the CME Group and the sub exchange is the NYMEX exchange, right? The New York Mercantile Exchange, which was acquired by the CME Group a while ago. Um, and it's all part, it goes, flows through the Globex electronic online trading system. And we're seeing pricing from that system uh, on our trading ladders uh, as we speak. Um, and it's, it's it, the blend of this crude oil is sweet. It's called sweet. And I'll, we won't go into too much detail. I'll show you what I mean by that in a second, but it's based on the, the blend and the chemical characteristics. Um, another benchmark crude, uh, the other one is, is, is Brent crude futures. And it's and that one's traded at the uh, Intercontinental Exchange, ICE, and it's also a popular contract. It's less sweet. We'll talk about what that means in a minute. Um, and then uh, the third big one uh, that people talk about is the DME Omen crude oil, uh, Dubai crude oil uh, futures, uh, which is uh, traded at the Dubai Mercantile Exchange. But it, interestingly enough, it, it's, it's actually uh, cleared through the CME Group's Clearing Corporation, right? So the CME has a division called the CME Clearing, and that's the Dubai is cleared there. Um, and that's a sour, sour sour crude uh, oil future. And let me just pick, take a picture. I'm going to show you a picture of uh, the uh, EIA.gov website. This is the United States Energy Information Administration, right? And it's a, it's a division of the Department of Energy. This for energy traders in general, this website is awesome. There's a ton of information. Government reports are issued through here. And it's really, it's, it's chock full of data. And I'm just showing you one web page here, but as a matter of fact, what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to cut and paste this into the Zoom panel and ask my uh, sidekick, Isabella, to follow suit and cut and paste that link into the YouTube as well as the um, uh, uh, Facebook uh, place as well. Um, Vinod, I'll get to that in a sec. Hang tight. Um, and so here you see kind of like a chart with, that describes uh, you know, the characteristics of different types of crude oil. And, you know, USA, you know, WTI is down here, right? And then at the bottom, you'll see what's called API gravity. It's a measure of density, heavy to light. And then you'll see the sulfur content. Sour is way up here, 3.5. And sweet is way down here. It goes all the way down to zero. And so why is that important? Well, we'll talk, I'll tell you in a second why that's important. But um, this is kind of a, a, a really neat chart to kind of show you what the different, uh, and these are sub bench, these, these are all benchmark, I guess, crude oils, but the big ones are the three I mentioned, right? Big ones are the three I mentioned. Um, so that's kind of a, and when you have time, feel free to click around on that. Um, now it's a, this is a standardized contract, right? And what I mean by that is it's, it's West Texas Intermediary Crude. The ticker symbol is MCL for the micros, right? MCL for the micros. Uh, it's, and it's, it, this is a commodity, right? Uh, as opposed to some of the other products that aren't commodities uh, in, the, in the sense that there's a physical, there's a physical thing here, right? Uh, it's delivered at Cushing, Oklahoma. All of this, this blend, this grade uh, is delivered at one place in Cushing, uh, Oklahoma uh, for distribution. And, um, you know, it's again, it's light versus sour. The light, the sweet is easier to convert into gasoline, right, as an example, and uh, in other low sulfur products, right? It's, it's easier to convert, so it's more desirable, right, for still, you know, for uh, to, get, to get them to, to be, you know, go through the distillation process, right, at the refineries, right, as they go ahead and make different types of uh, products out of the crude oil. Um, gasoline uh, is obviously a big one, and that's, um, and, that, and that's part of that whole standardization process is the blend, right? Exactly what blend is going to be accepted and be able to be called WTI light sweet. Um, this, this particular uh, market is a hundred barrel contract, and, which is one tenth the size of the big one. The CL is, you know, a thousand barrels, right? This is a hundred barrel contract. Um, the, uh, as an example, the average swimming pool, just to give you a kind of a, an idea uh, is 238 barrels. I, I found that on the World Wide Web. So take that with a grain of salt. But that's um, uh, what is Daniel? We'll get into that question in a second. Um, one barrel equals 42 gallons, right? Now, here's the really interesting statistic that everyone's going to be uh, fascinated by. A barrel of bourbon is 52 gallons. So we see here in the United States where we, <laughs> where we put our emphasis, we have, a, we, have, we have barrel bourbons are bigger than gasoline bourbons. I don't know why, but that's just the thing. So, and, and bourbon is, is actually a, is unique to the US by definition, as bizarre as that sounds, it's true. Okay, um, contract specifications, symbol MCL. And usually in the micros, you have that M put in front, right? For micro, that makes sense, micro, you know, the, uh, micro NASDAQ would be MNQ as an example. Um, these are monthly contracts as opposed to the stock index features, which are quarterly contracts, right? They roll over quarterly. These are monthly. Um, the last trading day, that's what LTD stands for, last trading day is four businesses, four business days prior to the 25th calendar day of the month prior to the contract month. I know that's a mouthful, um, but in essence, before this last trading day is when the new, the next month contract will have the volume in it. And that's the front month that everybody will trade. And the Ninja Trader software makes it really easy to know when this happens, right? It gives you a pop-up window and says, hey, it's time to roll over to, you know, the, the January contract or the February contract. Um, and, it, and it does do this, it does close one day before the big the big CL. And this, it's not really important unless you're offsetting trades, right? Unless you're, you know, long a CL contract in short, in short, you know, four micros as an example, which would give you an effective long position of 60% or 0.6, um, which you could do and margins do offset. It's another great thing about this. It's cash settled. Micros are not deliverable. No one's showing up uh, with a, with a hundred barrels of crude oil to your front yard. Uh, but so it's cash settled. 
uh, at the end of at the end. None of us really are taking settlement. You know, I think the whole, the, you know, the retail trading community uh, and even the investment community uh, are uh, either day trading or position trading and liquidating positions be well before you have to settle cash. So that's not really something to be concerned about. Um, tick size uh, is in cents, right? You can see here, let me freeze the dome, 67.61. That one is a cent, we'll call it, right? And it's traded in uh, 0 0.01 or, or hundredths. Uh, in each in each tick in this particular market is worth one dollar, right? Instead of the ten dollars you see in the bigger size contract. Um, there you go. Point size is a hundred dollars, right? So if I go from 67, uh, 65 to 68, 65, you know, that's a be a hundred cents or a hundred dollars per contract. Again, the big contract will be a thousand dollars. Um, margins, so overnight margins, last time I checked, which is when I did these slides uh, for this particular uh, contract is, is, is $561. And remember, overnight margins are set, uh, there's a couple different kinds of overnight margins, but they're set by the exchange, right? The exchange uh, sets these margins based on their risk uh, system. Uh, they're typically higher than day trade margins. And um, the exchange is it's this is the law of the land, right? Now, the weird thing about overnight margins is they're only really in effect for an hour, right? Because this is a 23 hour market, closes at, at uh, uh, five o'clock uh, uh, PM and opens up again at six o'clock, you know, Sunday night through Friday, right? And then there's the weekends off and then Sunday night you can start up again. So that overnight kind of, kind of um, is, is, is worth an hour of time, but there's some advantages here to this that we'll talk about when we get to the platform uh, with respect to holding positions past the close. And there's reasons why you may or may not want to do that. Um, <clears throat> typical day trading, you know, it varies between SCMs and brokers, uh, depending on who you're using, uh, you know, are typically around $100 uh, a contract. Again, we're getting back into this idea that you could fund a futures account with hundreds of dollars instead of thousands of dollars and be able to participate uh, uh, in these great markets. Um, and just remember margins magnify losses as well as gains, right? Because we have more leverage per dollar. The flip side of that coin is it's more ca capital efficient, right? And we'll, we'll show some margin examples on the platform also as we, uh, as we get going here. Um, daily volume has been, you know, this is a brand new contract and this is more impressive than it looks. Uh, right. I mean, we're, we're regularly almost over 70,000 contracts a day now, um, in this market. And remember we started July 12th and it's only December. So that's a really positive thing. That's showing that, that, that this market has got, it's got, it's liquid, um, uh, and it's, and it's got some good legs. Uh, behind it, and it's a market that we could participate in. Um, on the left-hand side, we see the volume, um, and this is just a snapshot I picked from you know from the CME Group website from October fifteenth to uh, actually this is this is the day after Thanksgiving where we had the uh, COVID variant scare here, November twenty-sixth. So I just kind of captured that picture there. On the right-hand side um, is open interest, right? Contracts that are open that are closed at the end of the, at the end of any given day. So this is more this is more impressive, I think. You know, notional value. You know, it, it, let's assume a seventy thousand uh, day um, at seventy dollars purchase price, um, and then you would multiply by a hundred for the point, and you get a notional value of four hundred ninety million dollars for that particular day in this example. And that, you know, that's, a, that's a lot of notional value. Remember, notional value is how much, how much, how big the market is, you know, what the, you know, how the position is, right? And that's, and, that's a, and that's a pretty decent size for a brand new contract. So I'm impressed with it. I think it's gonna continue to be uh, um, a benchmark that uh, uh, trading alternative for, for years to come. Um, Paul, hang on tight, I'll get that in a second. Um, Factors that affect price. There's a uh, little rig there on the right-hand side. Thank you, Jen. Shout out to Jen, my other sidekick who helps out with, I shouldn't say sidekick, associate. Uh, helps me with these things. So supply and demand this is kind of number one, right? So going back to the whole EIA uh, website, 
Um, there's, uh, they, there's, there's weekly reports and, and monthly reports and quarterly reports you can get uh, that talk about, um, that, that, that provide information on supply and demand. And I'll show you what those things are in a second. Um, so that's kind of number one, right? This is really, some folks would say it's a, it's a supply driven market. Um, and I think that focus is because of, you know, a legacy time when, you know, OPEC pretty much decided the price. Um, and, but now it's not so much the case anymore. And demand does matter as we saw during the COVID, this the COVID crisis uh, pandemic, you know, people were, were flying less, people were driving less. They were, you know, we were digging in, right. And we weren't doing all this stuff, you know, and so it is a supply and demand market. Um, you know, production matters. You know, when you think about in terms of production, you have a whole up, upstream and downstream process, right? You have to first identify where the crude oil might be, and then you have to get the permits, and then you have to make sure you have a distribution route, and then you have to pass the environmental clearance, and then uh, you can start drilling and develop putting your, your stuff together. And then, you know, when you when you get to where you want to be, then you can start pumping pumping oil all the ground. So it's a, the production is a process. Um, as a matter of fact, every Friday on the production side, there's um, Baker, uh, Baker used as a rig count that they publish every Friday afternoon that shows, you know, the rig, the rig count here in the U.S. and how it's changed week to week um, in terms of, and that kind of gives you a good sense of production, which is really, it's a really nice uh, uh, economic indicator, I would call it. Consumption, we talked about that, um, obviously, you know, COVID is a, was a great example. Um, import, export, there's a dynamic here, right? So now with, with the introduction of fracking and the United States' ability to generate uh, additional supply, um, you know, there's crude oil going in both directions right now, where that wasn't the case before, right? Uh, it wasn't the case before. And we have pipelines that are being either opened or closed, depending on, you know, what the politics are at any given time between Canada and uh, uh, the U.S. And then the U.S. dollar is a factor too. Remember, this is a U.S. dollar product. Um, uh, WC, WTI CL is, uh, you know, priced in U.S. dollars. And historically, this has been, um, they, you know, historically the price of oil has been inversely related to the price of the U.S. dollar. Um, you know, a barrel of, of oil is priced in U.S. dollars across the world. When the U.S. dollar is strong, you need fewer dollars to buy a barrel of oil. However, this has kind of changed a little bit. This isn't really necessarily true anymore. So, you know, again, if, if you pull up a chart and you correlate the U.S. dollar versus uh, uh, WTI, it, it's not going to be as correlated as it used to be. Uh, there's this whole import-export status has changed, as we kind of mentioned a second ago. All right, everybody's still with me. Don't worry. We're going to get to the platform in a second, and I'm going to get to the questions after we're through this PowerPoint, uh, which we're getting uh, close to. Um, Paul, the exchange is coming from the data is coming from uh, the CME group for this particular uh, for the W for the WTI CL. If you're talking about Brent, it would be coming from the ICE exchange, but here it's coming from the um, the CME group. Um, is where it's coming from. And for data fees and stuff, you got to talk to your broker, uh, whoever that may be, and they'll be able to point you in the right direction on that. And they're all similar, though. They're all not that much different. Okay. Um, let me expand this PowerPoint to show this chart a little better. I thought this was pretty cool. And I got it, again, I, 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 I pulled this off of the U.S. Energy Information Administration at EIA website I showed you a minute ago. Um, and um, you can see on the left-hand side here, it's like, this, you, know, you know, once we get this petroleum, petroleum products, you know, what's, what's the consumption per source? And you see motor gasoline is 44%. That's not surprising, right? Everybody has cars and most everybody has cars and they drive around a lot. Um, and it's a, it's a, it's a big deal, right? It's a big deal. You're going on vacation, you have a long car ride, you have to commute to work. It, now all of a sudden it's part of your cost, right? To get to, get to and from work and it, and it's, and it could eat into your budget, right? It's important. It's, everybody complains when gas prices are high and, um, you know, when gas prices are low, nobody says anything, but we're looking at about 44%, um, then distillate fuel, oil, uh, 21%. Hydrocarbon gas liquids, 18%. Jet fuel and aviation gasoline is only 6%. I was surprised at this. Um, it's a small, not, it's a smaller percentage, but it's still, it merits a piece of the pie, right? It, it merits a chunk of the pie. 
Um, and then others, you know, they got 11% in you know, the other category. On the right hand side, you look over and you look at the, you know, the sectors, right? And, you know, it's, it's 66% transportation, getting not only human beings from A to B, but uh, getting goods, you know, materials and goods back and forth, you know, Amazon trucks all over the place, you know, on, on the highway, you'll see all sorts of uh, long haul truckers, right? It's a thing. So uh, transportation is uh, 66 or two thirds uh, of, of, of the sector, then industrial, right? We have to, you know, we use, we use uh, crude products to in manufacturing processes to make stuff, right? Um, you know, plastics is obvious. Is 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 an obvious uh, uh, example, and then at the very end, you know, it's residential, it's, it's which is relatively smaller, um, you know, about six percent. So I found that kind of a, an interesting chart. And um, okay, so a couple of reports here that this is an EIA weekly report, very important. Uh, comes out Wednesdays. Uh, let me show you the link uh, or what it looks like actually. Here's what it looks like. Um, this is the, actually, I'm gonna cut and paste this also, and I'll ask Isabella to follow suit into the Zoom uh, chat. And um, this is uh, uh, you know, a, a, a good landing page to bookmark if you're gonna trade crude oil, if you just wanna follow, right? And so let's go ahead. Today's weekly petroleum status report. It's a weekly, I'm gonna hit the PDF here. And it's gonna open up um, you know, a little summary of, uh, of data there. And uh, this is, uh, you know, people look at this and there's a bigger version of the report that comes out with much more information on it. Uh, and then there's the data overview uh, PDF as well, which gives you breakdowns in more detail than any human being could possibly ever want. But it's pretty interesting to go through this. I know it looks kind of boring, uh, but um, I take a peek at it and you can scroll down and you, you get all sorts of really, really uh, nifty information. Um, again, weekly, it does move prices, right? It does move prices. This is a report similar to maybe if you would consider, um, you know, the impact on uh, uh, C CPI or, or PPI on uh, interest rate products, right? So it'll be equivalent to that kind of impact. Um, pretty important. Um, OPEC plus, OPEC plus is OPEC plus other people that aren't OPEC, you know, right? Russia is an example, right? And so um, I'm gonna finally cut and paste this link, maybe, how do I get this link going here? Click on the, oh, cause I, I'm in presentation mode. I'll, I will cut and paste this before, no, maybe I have it here. I do have it here. All right, let me just show you, let me click this link here too. You could follow this. This is their uh, OPEC message page, right? And they're showing us, uh, hey, surprise, surprise. There's a surprise meeting today uh, that started about three hours ago um, and tomorrow, which is uh, a direct response to Friday's COVID variant meltdown or melt up, depending on which market you're looking at. If you click on this download document, which I already did, um, it's going to give you a little bit more information, right? Media advisory for 182nd meeting of the OPEC conference, 35th meeting of the joint ministerial. How do you say that word? Uh, monitoring committee, and then 23rd OPEC and non-OPEC uh, uh, meeting uh, is happening now. And this is going to, you know, they're going to talk about uh, what to do with with what a chart phenomenon. We're going to see where. Uh, crude oil prices it broke significantly uh, on Friday. So that's kind of, a, you know, just to kind of know when the next meeting is and all that stuff. That's kind of a good link to know. Because um, again, their results and their announcements are similar to like the FOMC, right? The FOMC comes out and says, we're not going to raise interest rates or we're going to start tapering. Now, that's kind of a thing. If you're a Twitter person, um, which I am, there's a the hashtag OOTT terrific energy uh, uh, traders providing great tips and information. I would follow that hashtag if you're going to focus on this particular market uh, for sure. It's very handy. Um, okay. Competition. So we have domestic alternative energy. You see it all over the news, you know, green energy, you know, what's clean energy, 
uh, internationally. Um, you know, alternative energy, you know, is an example. It could be um, you know, nuclear energy, right? And now we have natural gas is kind of popping in there a lot, uh, for sure, as, as a competitor uh, for these energy initiatives. Um, clean energy, you know, you see windmills all over the place, especially when you drive through Indiana, you have about, I don't know, 20 miles of windmills. And I'm sure you see it in other parts of the country. I'm just used to that particular drive personally. So I know that they are there, but, um, and then offshore, a big debate with uh, environmentalists about should we be putting these windmills in the ocean, although they've been doing it in North Sea for a long time and it's very successful. Um, <clears throat> uh, and then, you know, international coordination, you know, goals, the Paris Accord, you know, countries meet and say, yeah, we're going to do all this great stuff. I know there's no enforcement. Maybe we'll, maybe it'll happen. Maybe it won't. Um, so these are, it's a little bit of a competition, but keep in mind, I mean, in my humble opinion, you know, crude oil energy requirements are going to be here for quite some time. Um, I don't think we're going to wake up next, next year in 2022 and say, oh, okay, we all have, you know, hydro, you know, ge geothermal, <laughs> heating in our house and, um, and solar panels on our roofs, and that's not gonna happen. It's gonna be a slow transition. Reasons to trade MCL, we're almost to the charts, guys, hang tight. Um, low capital requirements, remember one tenth the size, everything's a tenth smaller, right? Everything's a tenth smaller. So now you, you could even have a more capital efficient use of uh, whatever investment capital that, uh, that you have, and you could allocate, a, you know, you could allocate money in this uh, into an account. Um, liquidity, you know, we talked about the notional the, no, the amount of daily notional value. Um, we're going to take a look at the um, the trading ladder. And we're going to take a look at the overall daily volume in this market. Um, but there is liquidity there, right? There's liquidity. Twenty three hour access. You could express your opinion on price anytime you want. From uh, for twenty three hours from Sunday night all the way to Friday afternoon. And remember, this market is truly a global market commodity, right? It's global. And so, um, uh, you know, things happen uh, depending on where you are in this in this world. Um, you know, we have folks in, from Holland here. We have folks from South America here. Um, you have that ability to access uh, uh, this market 23 hours a day. It's a global benchmark. Um, you see it, you know, you, you listen into Bloomberg in the morning or whatever Reuters or whatever news uh, wherever you get your financial news, and it's 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 a reference point. Everyone's talking about it, um, and then other investors use these global benchmarks in terms of their investment strategy and portfolio allocations uh, because they know how they affect different parts of their uh, uh, different segments within their portfolios. Uh, and then lastly, transparent F and then FIFO trades. And I'll, and I'll show you what I mean by that in the trading ladder. But, you know, the, as opposed to over-the-counter products or cash products is a general rule, in my opinion, um, the futures markets, particularly the CME group markets um, and in the ICE markets also. But they provide a, a transparent marketplace. Uh, there's only one place to trade the, the, the CL the, in the MCL. And you see all the bids and offers, you, you know, your trades are placed on a first come first serve basis. And um, it's fair, in my opinion, it's fair. All right, now, finally, let's take a look at the platform. All right, <clears throat> and then I'll, I'll look at the questions. I've been ignoring uh, some of these because uh, they've been coming in too fast, but all right. So the minimum uh, points for a micro uh, crude, we talked about that. Um, let me just point, pull it up here. Um, it's one cent. Right, it's one, it's it's one cent, or one dollar. Um, Vinrod says, "Why am not? Why am I not MCL on my Ninja platform?" So, may you may not be enabled for it. So, just contact your broker and say, "Hey, please enable me for um, the MCL," and then they'll walk you through the process how to do it. It's very easy, very quick. Okay. Okay. Margins per contract. Let's talk about that because I'm going to do some sample trades here in a second. I think I could pick off most of these questions with some sample trades here. Before we do that, let's just take a look at a daily chart here. I have a daily chart. I made some notes on the daily chart. This is a candle chart. There's not a lot of analysis on it. I'm just going back to, you know, end of August around my birthday uh, till now. 
And you'll see that there was a Raelian crude, right? This is a this was a Raelian crude oil. Let me just kind of, you know, all the way up here to our high. Um, then we had a little bit of a price a price movement back down. We had a retracement, we would call it. Uh, and then right here, when we hit this low, this corresponded with the 22nd OPEC and then OPEC ministerial meeting. If I said that right. Thumbs up if I said it wrong, sorry. Um, and then sure enough, we kind of drove back up here. Remember, they're talking about production goals and setting you know, uh, their production goals for next year, right? Calen for January is what they did in this particular meeting. And today they're meeting to see if those numbers need to be, uh, if more production needs to be generated because of what happened next, right? We had this, we had this channel where prices started going down and then we got uh, Omicron Friday, day after Thanksgiving, resulted in this huge price dislocation, right? This huge price drop. It was 11.27 points high to low, representing a dollar value for one micro contract of $1,127. That's a huge, dominant, impressive, scary looking candle, right? Um, and then we had a little bit of lift again, and then we had another break the next day. And I have this, and I won't go into too much details, but I have this, uh, this blue line going across here, which was short-term support. Uh, we broke through that, and now we're trading below it, right? So my guess is um, they're, you know, the production, they're going to they're gonna vote today and tomorrow on, re on reducing production, right? They would, you know, they do, well, Peck would way prefer to have $80 crude oil than $67 crude oil, right? It makes sense. They'd like to make more money. We'll see. I don't know uh, what's going to happen, but we're below support right now, and we're in a we're in a bear market in crude oil. So right now, my bias is bearish in crude oil, um, as a, as a general rule. And today is kind of a doji like candle. Let me just kind of show you what I mean here. A little bit of green, not much. Very small body, big wick at the top, smaller wick at the bottom. Sellers came back in again today and kind of kept this in check, this price in check. That's kind of the daily, it's just kind of my, my thoughts on, you know, and I like to do that. I like to say, all right, what's my bias for today? Am I bullish or bearish? What's my bias for the week? Am I bullish or bearish? Well, today I'm, I'm, I'm bearish in this particular market. <clears throat> um, now at 10, uh, yeah, we already had our um, EIA release. I haven't really analyzed it yet. Um, uh, weekly report from the EIA was actually today. And tomorrow's the natural gas one. It's a little bit different. Um, so here on the on the platform, I have simply um, a 10-minute candlestick chart. I have a volume profile on the left, again, unique to futures trading. Uh, you don't have to have a pattern day trade account to get it. Um, it shows you the volume uh, distribution for the day at different price levels. So you just follow it across and you can see uh, you know, uh, how many contracts traded uh, it's 68.17 as an example. And it shows you where the distribution is. Remember your bell-shaped curve math uh, class where you have one standard deviation, which is the dark blue, and then the lighter areas are outside of that standard deviation. It gives us areas of interest to place trades. Um, at the bottom, I have an oscillator. Simple, you know, you could, whatever oscillator you're interested in. And Ninja Trader has all sorts of different indicators. And let me just show you what those look like before we go any further, uh, here are all the available ones. And they're all, almost every one of these is customizable. And there's, you know, I don't know how many, I've never counted them. There's a lot here. And at the bottom are the ones that I have applied in my chart. And um, then you could, again, you could just select something and color code it or uh, change parameters or, uh, you know, do whatever, uh, do, do whatever you'd like to do. Six per level, just as an example, I'm gonna change this to five. And you can see the numbers a little better. Hit OK. And then it, I have a moving average cross at the bottom. And that's it. That's what I'm looking at right now. This is, this is, this is my window. On the trading ladder itself, um, let's talk about that. Here's the micro crude trading oil. We have prices in the middle. This is why it's called a trading ladder. This is the Ninja Trader Superdome. Uh, I think it's a, an outstanding component of the actual platform. You can place trades from it directly simply by just clicking. On, oops, I don't, have my, I don't have the right account set up for this one. Sorry and just click and you go, right? And so um, it's really that it's really that easy. Um, and we'll place the sample trades in a second, but <clears throat> um, prices in the middle, each increment's one cent, right? And there's a hundred cents to a point, to a point. 
So 67, 24 to 68, 24 is 100 of those as you go, $10 per 10 cents. It's The math is easy. And the left-hand side is the bids or these represent limit orders that have been sent to the exchange by traders, whether they're individual, institutional, commercial, who knows, um, at various different prices to buy contracts at these prices. And this represents how many contracts are sitting in the order book right now. On the offer side or the sell side, same thing. Limit orders that are sent to the exchange already, they're waiting at the, at the uh, CME group to get filled at various prices. This yellow tag in the middle here is the last traded price. And it's moving around, it's dynamic, right? Things are changing and traders are adding and subtracting orders or canceling, replacing orders, orders are getting filled. Um, and then the supply and demand of uh, bu between buyers and sellers are driving the price around, right? Driving the price around. Um, so let me just make sure I've got a SIM kit. Let me make sure I have the right SIM account. So I have two of them here um, set up. And let me move that over there. And I think we're good. I'm going to go ahead and hide my chart trader. And we're simply going to just go ahead and randomly place a trade, right? Just to sell a contract, right? I didn't do... Uh, don't follow live, please. Uh, don't follow live. This is just a kind of a random example. And so in future trading, remember, you could sell instead of buy, right? You want, if, you, if your opinion is the market's going to go down, then you could, you could sell a contract. If your opinion is the market's going to go up, you could buy a contract. It's totally up to you. And I'm going to freeze it here. So our, our short position now is from 60, 67.24. Uh, the market's at 67.30, right? So the trade's going the wrong way. It's going against me. My PL here at the bottom is, uh, it moves around in real time. It's $3 right now. Remember, it's a dollar a tick. And then everything is duplicated or mimicked on the chart itself, right? So here's the, here's my, this label here tells me where I, where I have my position from, right? I could also place a trade from the chart if I like as well. I could place a trade from the chart. And so let's say in this particular example, um, I'm hoping the price, this dotted line here represents yesterday's close. And let's, let me just kind of say, I, I, hope, I hope we get down to that purple dotted line and I'll place this trade from the actual trading ladder. I'm gonna send an order, a buy limit order. So the exchange, now I'm in a SIM account, right? So it's, I didn't really send it to the exchange, but that's uh, what would happen. And then it's mirrored here on the trading ladder. I'm trying to buy one back at 67.97, right? I wanted to make new lows right now, re re contemporary lows, recent lows. And that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's how you do it from the chart. You're just gonna right click and, and pop it in there. And then I, would, I could place a buy stop here to complete the anatomy of the trade. Um, and uh, so now we have, and you know, I just again, I just randomly placed it so you could see it. Um, don't don't uh, suggest that this is a strategy whatsoever. It's not. So um, position, target, stop, and again, you could you know you could adjust these things however you want, right? You just move them around, and it changes on the price ladder itself. Everything's in sync. Everything's uh, operational. Everything's good. So remember, my 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 position was biased generally, right? So. Um, that's why I kind of threw that in there, even though we do have some uh, uh, price, uh, pretty much a lot of price depreciation already today. Um, because if you think about it, the high today, you know, we're at, we're at $69.51. Uh, and now we're trading at $67.24. So that's $2.25 already uh, on the downside from the highs today, which uh, is actually very interesting to me. All right, any questions at this point? Uh, so it, uh, what data feed do you need? Well, it's whatever brokerage firm you go with. You know, Ninja Traders uh, is a, uh, the Ninja Trader platform is a multi-broker platform and uh, that uh, th those folks will, uh, will tell you uh, your options with respect to which data feed. But you know, again, it's coming from the CME group and the data vendors could be all different. But since I'm in a real-time SIM account, you know, my connection is, is a kinetic connection. But that's only because I'm in a real-time SIM account. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, so um, Kaz, Cosimo, I know your name now. You could you could absolutely use um, the ATM strategies um, on the Ninja Trader Trading uh, Superdome or on the actual chart themselves to create uh, OTO, OCO, order cancels order triggers order other order cancels other trailing stops. It can get very sophisticated. 
um, and or simple as you want it, but absolutely you could do that with the platform. Um, and once you do it a couple of times, it's really intuitive and really easy to do. <laughs> Me and you are like brothers, man. It's only been two events. We are like brothers. Um, anyway, let's take a look at margin. Up here at the top, we have uh, my cash value was 5,979 bucks, 25 cents. I'm using a hundred dollars in intraday margin, right? I have one position on, um, and this is just, you know, all the brokerage firms are, are pretty, are here or around here. Um, and that's how much I'm using. Intraday is the same as day trade margin, right? And um, moving over, I have ex my excess. Intraday margin is pretty big, right? It's because I'm only using 100 of the 59.79. Um, but I'll keep in mind, I know the math doesn't work because I have an unrealized PL, right? This is, this is a positive unrealized PL on my open position. So you got to add that back to your excess intraday margin. And then uh, initial margin looks like it has changed since my slide, which makes sense. It makes sense it's changed because I made my slide. Remember, CME Group changes their overnight margins. Uh, on a regular basis. And here, um, this big, you know, after this big price move, CME changed their their uh, overnight margins to, well, what was 631? We just got filled on a profit target. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel, uh, cancel my, tar my, uh, my stop. I'm gonna do it again so we can see the, see the math. Um, 100 day trade. Initial margin or overnight margin is another word to call it is $643. Um, and my excess initial margin, in other words, the amount of money I have to hold the trade is still positive. Um, I'm in good shape there. My net liquidating value is, is, is a combination of my, uh, uh, of, um, <clears throat> my uh, realized and my unrealized. All right, and so that's kind of that's kind of where we're at now. Why is this initial margin so important on a micro versus a big one? Well, on a big one, remember, it'd be ten times bigger, right? So you would have to have six thousand four hundred and thirty-five dollars in your account to hold this position overnight. Now, let's say that you know I wanted to keep it. Maybe I you know I expect this market to trade. You know I don't know. I, I expect it to get down to. Uh, 6620 is an example, um, but there's only, you know, it's 1244 in the afternoon and we've got, I don't know, three, uh, how much time do we have left? We have till five o'clock. So we have a little over four hours left, but maybe it won't get there between now and then, right? Time is a factor in trading. This is, this is time series analysis, right? We have each candle is a 10 minute candle. Maybe we won't get there. Well, but I think by tomorrow we'll get there. So then maybe I want to hold this position overnight, right? And and you know, depending on my account size, it's, it might be a little easier to do um, with uh, you know a, a six hundred forty three dollar day uh, overnight margin instead of a, a six thousand four hundred thirty five dollar one. You know, it's it's whatever your risk preference is. It's okay. Um, it's fine. But. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Paul, the uh, real time, uh, again, go to your broker. Everybody's different um, with respect to how they deal with the fees. Uh, Antonio, hang tight on that for a second. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to place another order here and let's see what happens. So I'm going to place another limit order. Is let's say the market goes back up to the top of the ca this candle here that we're looking at this candle right here. I'd like to sell another one as an example. So I'm just gonna right click and I'm gonna go ahead and hit sell. So um, now uh, what's happened is my intraday margin or day trade margin is doubled, right? So day trade margin is basically the way they work is they take your position and then they add a potential position, right? And so I have the potential here to sell a second contract, which would make me short two contracts. So now my day, I'm using $200 of my day trade margin or intraday margin. My initial margin hasn't changed until I have a second unit, until I have a second position. And let's go ahead and get a second position. 
All right, so I just go, I went ahead and I just sold another one. So now I have two, I'm short two contracts, right? You say you call them short. If we were bought them, we'd be long. We're short two contracts. Um, and my uh, initial margin or my overnight margin is doubled, right? It's now $1,287, right? If I want to hold this past the close, uh, I still have plenty of excess margin. Um, now my intraday margin though is 300, right? The two that I have on plus the one that's dangling out here. Uh, that has the potential to get filled, right? And I can go ahead and just place a couple of orders in here as for, you know, profit targets as an example. Um, and now I've kind of have a, you know, some sort of uh, trade setup going on here. And lastly, I'd probably want to do a stop loss. Again, don't follow along at home. This is just uh, me clicking just as a, as a demonstration process, right? So we got one of the units uh, off the table right now and change my stuff to a two lot now because there's a two potential. I got the one here and I got the second one I could technically get filled at, uh, which would require a two unit or two contract in this particular case position. Remember when I had the two contracts on, everything was doubled. Okay, where are we at? Yeah, you just have to talk to, and uh, you know, if you do have an account, um, there is this, uh, regardless of whoever your broker is, there is this uh, help feature here for the platform, broker support. If you click on this thing, email support, um, type in what your question or what you need, and you will get a response. It's fa I know it's email. It's like, oh my God, I got to send an email. This is faster. Uh, the, the guys and gals at the broker support desk are outstanding and they're quick. So that's another way. If you don't want to call, you could do that. All right. So our second unit got filled here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and now cancel this uh, third unit and cancel my stop. And the downward trend continu uh, continues. Uh, realized here in the second account. Um, oh, did I place this first one here? Well, in the second account is 76 bucks and 50 cents right now. Uh, <clears throat> That's, uh, that's that. And this is actually looking pretty negative. All right, guys, we're getting close to the end here. Um, so we still got a, a few minutes here. So feel free to type in any questions or uh, comments that you may have. We talked about day trade margin. We talked about overnight margin. Don't overdo it on the day trade margin, for sure. Um, uh, Cosimo asks, are certain times of the day more advantageous to trade this instrument morning or afternoon or doesn't matter? That's a great comment. Actually, it does matter. Um, you know, keep in mind that Wednesday number that comes out, right? That's kind of important that Wednesday, that Wednesday number. Um, but giving, given the, um, you know, the COVID circumstances, I would kind of focus on if you're trading in the day, no, you're depending on where you're located. Um, you know, I would focus on uh, the New York Open. I know it's the I know it's the equity market. I know it's the cash market, uh, but that's where the volume tends to be. And let's just kind of pop in here and do a let's add a volume. Let's add a let's add a volume thing here. Go down to here. Let's add volume uh, up or down double click, I'm gonna add it to my charts, I'm gonna highlight it. I got up volume green, that's fine. I got down volume is red. Let's see how big the, let's make the wicks, let's make them a little wider so we can see them a little better in the presentation. Uh, this one will be a four, apply and okay. And so you could, you know, you wanna go with the volume always in my opinion, especially if you're day trading. If you're position trading, it's a different story because you're gonna be looking at a, day, a daily chart. You're gonna be putting a limit order in and you're gonna be patient. But here from a day trading point of view, you know, eight to eight, 10, we had a big volume spike for some reason, right? That would be pre-market. It would be pre-New pre York. And then volume has been up, up pretty high ever since then. Before that, you could see these histogram bars at the bottom are a lot lower, right? There's less volume um, and uh, uh, in, the, in the nighttime, right? In the evening. So I would go by that in terms of what's the best time to, to day trade. And then uh, once you establish what works for you the best, then become an expert in that time frame. Um, you know, liquidity does matter. Your bid ask spread does matter. The bid ask spread could get more that, you know, could be thinner in this particular market. Um, 
I can't even freeze the, the price letter to show you. But right now, um, here's a good example. Oh, shoot, I missed it. Uh, right now, the bid ask spreads one tick, right? That's the smallest price increment. And it's part of your execution costs, right? That's a dollar. I'm so, yeah. So when that's two, three, or four, um, that adds to it. So uh, make sure um, the volume is good. <clears throat> uh, Keila asks about lifetime licenses for the Ninja Trader um, platform. Uh, I, I don't, you know, you, you're jumping the shark a little bit, but I think um, I would be prepared for a December 6th announcement. <laughs> That's all I could say right now. I would be, I would be, I would, I would, I would, I would be in anticipation of a December 6th announcement on that, uh, which is a good thing. Wink, wink, thumbs up. Don't get me in trouble. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, <clears throat> so, okay, back to the volume question. So that's kind of, that's kind of a thing, right? Looking at, looking at the volume, keeping track of that, knowing when the bid ask spreads decent, knowing when, and also, it, you know, it has a tendency to match up with market moves. And let me just pull up a, a crosshairs here, you know, look at this big volume spike. And, and this is right in the middle of this con red continuation candle. Let me just kind of pull it up a little bit. You know, we have a, we had a, we had a decent size, uh, uh, down candle, red candle, a continuation candle, continuation candle and continuation candle. And you can see this, this vine spike is like in, in, in cahoots with that, which is a good thing. It gives us indication that, that, that there's a move afoot, right? The CCI confirmed it, moving average cross crossed. I mean, right there, I'm just lining up my crosshairs with my, with my two indicators in the volume. And you can see uh, moving average cross started moving up, hit all time low. Uh, you know, we, we were, I don't know, what was this, minus 367 in the CCI. That's hugely negative. Uh, moving average cross started crossing under. Um, and uh, so that would have been a good signal. It doesn't always work that way. Remember, past performance on indicative future results, but that was a good signal right there. <clears throat> so I would look, you know, what's considered a good volume? You know, I would just kind of look at, the relative height of these particular histogram bars. I'm looking at a 10 minute chart. So whatever, if you look at a different time frame, you're gonna see different information. Um, but you know, we, we're over, I don't know, 1500 or over on a 10 minute for this particular market. Remember it's new, it's in its infancy. Um, and if you really wanna look at uh, volume, <clears throat> let's take a look at the quote board here, my market analyzer, I had it hidden. Um, Right down here on energy area here, I have all my different asset classes here written down uh, uh, on my quote board or market analyzer. We've got um, crude oil, uh, the, the classic contract has 427,000 contracts already. Uh, the micros have about a fourth, 100,000 uh, contracts already. Um, you know, and just to put that in perspective, um, you know, that's a, <clears throat> You know, a hundred thousand contracts um, is um, is is a decent a decent amount of volume uh, for today for sure, and um, you know it's more than silver, right? Silver was it for? It's more than copper. These you know these are good markets to trade also. So I don't know if I got off on a tangent on that or not. I might have. Sorry if I did. So again, Charles, I would keep an eye on the bid ask spread. Best practices, limit orders to the extent that you could use limit orders um, to enter and for your profit targets. Um, I know stop losses, sometimes you just got to do a stop market, but that's a good, uh, a good philosophy. And then look at the volume spikes. Um, today, eight o'clock on, we had some, we had some uh, pretty early in the morning, a little less. Cos says more than my CN, my CDN dollar. <clears throat> uh, Anissa asks, 
do you advise us to intraday trading or to follow the general trend? Well, so I, I you know, it's your, it's a personal preference and, you know, it, it, it's, it's a big deal what you decide to do, right? Do you want to position trade, right? And go with the trend um, and hold positions for a long period of time. That's a technique that's up, you know, that's something that, you know, let's say up here, you decided you wanted to sell a contract, right? Uh, or if you wanted to buy a contract, well, if you bought a contract here, it wouldn't have been good, but who knows? Um, and you want to hold it for a long period of time, um, then you're going with the trend, right? So, and the trend tends to, remember the, the river, the market's like a river. It flows up and down and sideways and all over the place. And you don't know the direction it's going to go, right? It's an uncharted river going forward. It never ends. It never stops. Every week it, it starts up again and keeps going. And so through that normal course of uh, supply and demand um, and buyers and sellers engaging in combat, basically, um, you're going to have prices go up and down. So when you go with the longer term trend, um, typically uh, one strategy would be to position trade, right? And hold something for a longer period of time. And that's when that overnight margin or initial margin, we call it, kicks into play. Um, day trading is another type of trading. We do that. We, we talk about that Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at the live trade setup events uh, that we do here at Ninja Trader every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday morning at 10 o'clock. And if you go back to the platform training webpage, you'll see the actual link on how to join those events. They're also free and you can come anytime you want uh, to those as well. And we do focus on day trading strategies and day, day trading techniques in those events. <sighs> okay. Whew. It was, a, it was a lot to talk about. In any event, um, yeah, no worries. I appreciate the question. Um, we're up against our hour period here. Um, and uh, type in any questions you might have. I do want to remind you guys a couple, one more, a couple more slides here uh, and we'll be done, done. Um, yeah, I do remind you, remind you, trading futures options on futures involves substantial risk of loss. Not suitable for all traders. Oftentimes in future trading, you have a high combination of leverage and volatility. Uh, although that could represent opportunities, it also represents risk. So be careful. Only fund your future trading account with risk capital. Um, so be in a good spot. Easy on the day trade leverage for sure. Um, and Justin, I'll get to that in a sec. Oh, and there's one other trading ladder question somebody asked me as well. I'll get to that as well. Um, and then there's just kind of like, all right, there's the profile, there's the platform training uh, page. Um, you know, tomorrow we're doing a futures trading 101 event. So if you're brand new to futures trading, um, we're going to talk a lot about what a bid ask spread is, what volume is, how it's routed, the benefits of trading futures, what the exchange is, all of that stuff is uh, tomorrow afternoon, 12 o'clock. Live trade setups, uh, like I talked about, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then some other events that we're going to be uh, cycling in uh, on that platform training webpage um, are uh, listed on the on this uh, sheet as well. And um, any questions on that? Let me know. I'm going to move this out of the way. Um, on the trading ladder uh, question. Um, you right click on anything in Ninja Trader and you get options, right? So I'm just going to right click on a trading dome um, and I'll see all of these uh, different kind of options. And one of, the, one of these options are called columns. Yeah, click on columns and then you could add some columns uh, to uh, the trading ladder as an example. Uh, same holds true with the, mar with the quote board, right? Someone asked about the quote board, right click on that. Again, columns. And then you're going to get all of the stuff you could add um, to the uh, <clears throat> as a column, right? Is a column on the actual market analyzer. I have mine vertical instead of horizontal. Some people like theirs horizontal, um, but kind of, you can kind of scroll through here. You get your unreal, unrealized PL is an example of something that might be uh, useful. Realized PL uh, might be useful. Uh, is a particular uh, column and, um, and all of that stuff. So I'm gonna ask about margins that I'm not sure if margins on or I never added margins before, but I would scroll through here and just see what's on there and see if it, it, it interests you or not. Um, what else was I gonna say? Where else are we? Kaz, good day. Thanks for being here. 
Um, and then on colors, the same thing. I would experiment, just kind of right click. Um, and uh, also on the toolbar, let's just go over the toolbar new. Uh, you can set up, you know, there's all of these different uh, options to add, open up new things, right? Charts, uh, hot lists, market analyzer, um, tools, uh, tool menu, go through to, you can see options here uh, that you could click on and change different things. So um, I would go through there and kind of create, you know, my skin is slate light. Right, that's why you have that that skin is slate light uh, as a general uh, and as a general category. So you know, I would uh, go ahead and kind of experiment with some of that stuff. And then you could also write, you actually just right click on the chart itself and get um, you know look at your data series and some of the other stuff uh, properties as an example. I'll give you a property bar. You know, and it has colors on the property bar. You know, the chart background white, crosshairs light gray. You know, so um, text is black. So I would kind of uh, go here and kind of make your customize your desktop. Uh, uh, whoever I said, I think Justin, however you want it, and um, and we're good to go. So is volume, volume is a great tool. Volume, and this is where, if you come to the Futures Trading 101 event tomorrow, we're gonna to talk a lot about volume and this volume profile. This is where the rubber meets the road in Futures Trading. This volume, transparent volume, one exchange, only place you see the whole entire playing field, and then the trading ladder. So definitely come to those. But it is 102, I do need to wrap it up. Uh, again, thank you for coming everybody. Uh, love that thumbs up button on YouTube. If you're interested in clicking on that thumbs up button, you YouTube folks, I would greatly appreciate that. Hopefully we'll see you at the next event. And I do want to remind everybody uh, to be safe out there and to be good to each other. Take care. Thank you.